Welcome to Wednesday's Word. It's a joy to be back with you. And I was gone after getting married, a uh, honeymoon, and, and so I'm very grateful to Lena Morrow and Katie Morrow who did some Wednesday's Words for me. But we're going to start a new series today, and we'll come back to the Mustang series intermittently as Casey and Jasper grow and learn and develop. But today we're going to start the travel series. I'm going to take you to beautiful places of Oregon, maybe places you've never seen, maybe you have seen them before, but I hadn't. And I'd like you to experience them maybe in a new way. And so the first place I want to take you to is on the outside of Lincoln City. In fact, it's in a beautiful place. We were actually looking at going to a place known as God's Thumb, a, a vista that looks out over the Pacific Ocean. And with beautiful views. There's also Cascade Head and when I was in college I went there and it's beautiful the views of the beach. But the one I want to take you to today actually is part of the way to God's thumb. It's called the Knoll. You're gonna see in a few still shots it's like what the trailhead looks like, uh, what the path looks like. Then you're gonna see some of the vegetation, some of the some of the animals or birds you might encounter if you take the trail to the knoll. Then you'll see a picture of my Lisa from the top. It was a gorgeous day, a beautiful view. And you might say, well, Pastor, how are you going to tie that in? Well, I'm going to take you to Matthew, to the 14th chapter. And this is what Jesus does and this is what Jesus says immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away and when he had sent the multitudes away he went up on a mountain by himself to pray he's going with purpose he's fed the five thousand he saw sent thousands of people away. He sent the disciples across the sea and he goes up on a mountain to pray. Matthew writes, and when evening had come, he was there alone. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. I love that passage because there's important stuff that is about ready to happen. And Jesus has had the biggest crowd ever up to that point in his ministry, but he sends them away. He sends the disciples away. He wants one-on-one -on -one time with the Father. He's there to pray. He there prays in the night. He prays for hours. He prays with purpose. He prays with full awareness of what's going on, even for his disciples. And it's at the right time in the fourth watch of the night when they have struggled because the winds are contrary, when they are probably already afraid because of the storms and the wind and maybe afraid for their life. Jesus comes in the midst of their need, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the wind, and he speaks. He said, don't be afraid. It is I. Don't be afraid of the winds. Don't be afraid when you see me walking on the water. I'm not a ghost. I'm your Savior. And you can trust me. How does that tie in with the knoll? It was interesting as we were walking up. It's like uh, we had been in Lincoln City and we'd seen all the people and all the places and all the stuff. But the knoll was different. You didn't see many. Some were coming back down and they were huffing and puffing and sweaty. And so we asked them what they'd seen, how far it would be, how hard. And 
the little knoll map didn't even tell you how to get to God's thumb. They said, there's a fork in the road, not well traveled, don't want to miss it, but it'll get you there. But the trail is harder. The knoll is easier to reach. You can see almost the same stuff from the knoll. But if you really want to go an extra hour and go through all the extra time, you can get to God's thumb. We went a little farther. I'm huffing and puffing by now. And another couple comes down. They're 75 years old. And they said, and, and we told them we had just got married and all the things that go with that. And they, they were congratulatory. And they, they told us about their marriage, about the places God had led them. And they said, we used to have a bunch of couples that went hiking and they've all quit except us. We're 75 and we don't want to quit because we're still strong enough to go because we keep it up. And friends in Christ, I think that's what prayer is like. That when we continue to pray, it builds up spiritual muscles. It becomes part of who we do and how we do life together. It's that relationship that we have with the Father and the Son and the Spirit. When we talk with Him, He strengthens us for our journey. We're ready when He speaks. He calms our fears and those things that cause us to fear, we can bring to the Lord in prayer, knowing that He hears us, that He understands, and that He will help us in our need. So friends in Christ, I want you to think about your travel journey. And maybe the paths that God leads you on. Maybe along the way you want to quit. Maybe you're huffing and puffing. Maybe you're saying this is too steep or this is too long or I can't see the end or it's not well marked. But know that the Lord is with you, talking to you, helping you, and has great things to show you as you walk with Him in your life's journey. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for all the things you show us, for the people you put in our lives, for the places you take us to. Sometimes they're pleasant and they're beautiful. And from the vistas of high above, we see with greater clarity. We behold the beauty of your creation, the beauty of your spirit. And sometimes we're in the depths, in the struggles, when our strength seems gone. And Lord, you are there and you teach us and you help us and you guide us every step of the way. So Lord, speak to us in that way today. And Lord, if prayer isn't part of our daily journey, teach us to pray. Help us to make it part of our daily walk with you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful week.